Hey guys, Future B here. Uh, just to let you guys know, there is going to be heavy spoiler talk in this review of Across the Spider-Verse. Just to let you guys know, you can watch the beginning of the movie up until this point. So up until this, till this point, you can stop the video, go directly to this time frame, and that will take you near to the end of the video. So just to give you a chance to watch across the spider-verse and then come back to here where I talk spoilers so just to give, give you guys a heads up okay enjoy the video and subscribe thank you hey guys this is Redwing2029 and I just got back from seeing spider-man across the spider-verse of course you know I'm decked out in a glorious mask even though it's not really spider-man related it's more a certain other Merc with the mouth who also wears the mask, but you know, the hoodie kind of, you know, represents it and kind of looks Miles esque, so <laughs> yeah. Um, Ruby was, you know, I have to say, like straight away before getting into spoilers, movie was fantastic. Like, well done, movie, good, good art design, good animation, and a story which I'll get to in a moment, but take the mask off because surprise ha 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 pretty good looking mask there so across the spider-verse I I wish I got to talk about the into the spider-verse film which I'm so ashamed that I didn't even get to speak about it during its time of release and it's one of my favorite movies if not like, of all time and just thinking about it like I could have made a video on it like when I was still you know making videos I'll get more to that in a separate video but yeah I was yeah, kind of annoyed I didn't get to talk about it but I'm here talking about its sequel which is actually a part one of a two-part uh, extended branching story because this is advertised as a two-part film and the way it ended it's definitely setting up all the I guess the spidey strings for the second part which is you know kind of reminds me of say like Deathly Hallows you know it's the big massive book they'll split into two parts parts and also the Hunger Games Mockingjay which was also you know, a big massive book they'll split into two parts so this is this is probably a big massive story big massive animation so no wonder it had to be split into to two because the way it ended it just wow so really good movie um i definitely like the beginning of it it definitely showcases um the introduction of you know Gwen Stacy's new character arc, it kind of begins with her and it shows, you know, what happens to the Peter in her universe and also, you know, her father introduces her father, which she's he's been on the hunt for his own daughter in disguise, the Spider-Woman. So that's kind of a nice bit of drama and also straight away introduces the whole multiverse, you know, the this renaissance vulture and you know Miguel aka you know Spider-Man 2099 and also another Spider-Woman which if it's from the comics like she's pregnant like she's having a bike like it's from the comics but how are you able to fight pregnant that's that's crazy but Pretty good introduction to the whole you know mechanic of you know the spider-verse and then it get cuts to miles who you know it, it, lovely introduction story and also introduces the villain spot which i love the way that they've made a small you know um joke from into the spider-verse of miles throwing a bagel at some random guy and it became the origin of spot that's just brilliant it shows like the whole very like the very small choices have big massive comp uh consequences in this case it created the spot which eventually becomes this multiversal threat 
like midway through the movie and just mind blowing. Also, his theme for the spot is really, really good. It, it, which has mixes of the uh, Collider theme from the um, Into the Spider-Verse film as well, so it kind of makes sense, so. And I do like that beginning fight and <laughs> pretty pretty funny dialogue between you know, Spider-Man such Miles and also his father as well. And, and eventually, you know, Miles comes across the problem of being a Spider-Man, like, living these two separate lives, like running late, having trying to grab a, an apology cake for you know, his father's toast and try to be there for him, but he ends up being late for the toast and also messing up the cake because he's you know, fighting crime on the way. That's some pretty cool uh, stuff. I'd say the, mu the, the music is you know, fan-freaking-tastic. Like, definitely some of the themes, like, really there's two themes, like the Spot theme, and also the um, Miguel theme, the Spider-Man 20, 2099. That was like two of the most amazing themes, but some of the other you know, music choices were spot on, like blown away. So then, you know, Gwen Stacy goes into Miles' universe, you know, they catch up, but you know, Gwen Stacy's just there to keep an eye on the Spot, you, you know. And this ends up, you know, failing her task because, you know, she's spending more time with Miles as opposed to keeping an eye on this potentially multiversal threat, the spot which escapes from, you know, Miles' universe because he discovers, you know, these spots, you know, can travel into dimensional, like, different wormholes, which is, like, it's crazy. So then she travels to another dimension and unaware that she brought Miles with him to try and track down the spot, which is a universe where this, you know, this Indian Spider-Man comes in and tries to put a stop to this multiple multiversal threat. Now the spot from getting into the Collider, and also joined by Spider-Punk, which is really cool to have finally in a movie. This new variant, and also his art style looks like he's from a magazine cutout, which kind of suits the theme and the style which is I love that and they didn't really it didn't really work for, work out for them so then they go to the spider society when they meet you know the different variants of spider-man reunite with uh, um, Peter Benjamin Parker or PB Parker who's now a father which is to May Day which is like a little spider girl which is awesome and they eventually do meet, you know, uh, Spider-Man 2029, which does reveal, like, a bit of a moral, you know, moral dilemma with, for the audience and also for the characters. That is, what happened is he explains these canon events that each of the Peter, each of the Spider-Men are both, you know, bitten by a radioactive spider and have someone close to them die like you know Uncle Ben or uh, Gwen Stacy or their dad or you know some uh, Aunt Mays or someone close to them that's what ties these Spider-Men together and if they you know don't if the canon event doesn't happen then it ends up you know destroying you know their universe like one of the Spider-Men's universe so Miles finds out that his dad is going to die and he's super annoyed about this and wants to go back and try and save him but Miguel says like oh you need to you, you need to save like rather saving you know risking one life as opposed to the entire multiverse and he's been standing by this because he did you know travel to a different universe where he dies and he kind of becomes this you know universes Miguel but this ends up breaking the canon event which destroys that universe so kind of interesting and also another dilemma that you know Miguel reveals that Miles is in fact an anomaly the entire time meaning he wasn't meant to get the radioactive spider wasn't meant to be spider-man that you know his version version of Peter died to save him 
So he's just, you know, been this anomaly, this variant the entire time, spreading, you know, anomaly. And a couple of the other characters that Miles knows already knows this, so just mind boggling. So, but huge moral decision do you, you know, save the life of one person as opposed to the entire mul multi multiverse? Or. Do you, do you save the entire universe as opposed to one person? That's a huge question. It's like, it's it's kind of in a situation where either right or wrong, but I would choose to save many other people as opposed to one person. I think that's why, even though Miguel's kind of the villain in this film, but he's not ex his morals aren't exact, he's justified, like, He's doing this for the greater good. Like he doesn't want to be, you know, he doesn't want to pursue Miles and thrash him, but he, you know, he's doing this to do the right thing, just to make sure the entire multiverse is intact. So yeah, and this next then we got this big chase between Miles and all these Spider-Men, including like Cat Spider-Man, T-Rex Spider-Man couple other variants just absolutely crazy it took like many years for them to animate that which is again mind-blowing it would take a long time just to animate all these different spider-man chasing and then so what happens is miguel chases miles down up into the train and then they have a little fight but then he reveals that oh i lured everyone away from the clubhouse so we can go back to the base of the spider society go to this interdimensional you know transporter that they have and send him back to his own universe to warn his dad about the spot but here comes the huge plot twist Gwen also gets sent back to a different universe but then gets a dimensional transporter through spider punk so she can able to travel different dimensions in this case, she assembles her own team, while Miguel, Scarlet Spider, and Spider Woman go to, I think it's the same universe that Miles, that Miles is currently in. But it's un, unsure, I'm unsure, I'm unsure what universe they're in, I think, I'm pretty sure it's their universe, but they're, they're right there in that universe trying to track Miles. And Miles quickly soon finds out that he's in Earth 42, which is the same Earth that that radioactive spider bit him to give him the Spider-Man powers. It's, it's insane, like, and he finds out that, you know, Uncle Aaron's alive, but he also finds himself as the Prowler. Oh my god. Just insane that, you know, that cliffhanger, and it and it cuts to, you know, Gwen assembling her Spidey team, including Indian Spider-Man, um, Spider-Punk, some of the previous uh, Spider-Men from Into the Spider-Verse, that includes Peter B. Parker, Penny Parker, um, Spider-Ham, uh, Spider-Noir, I think also Scarlet Spider was there, I can't really, I can't remember, but man, what a way to end it on, just to fantastic movie i'm hyped for part two so hyped i'm probably going to talk about that but probably the next movie i want to see is rise of the beast because that is coming out uh next weekend and in my country it's not even out yet it's out in america and some parts of the the world but not here which is annoying because i wanted to see that so anyway I would give I would give a high recommendation for Across the Spider-Verse. If you love the first movie, then you'll absolutely love Across the Spider-Verse. It is mind-blowing. Anyway, this has been Dread Week 2029. And saying have a spectacular day. I'm gonna go fight some crime. <laughs>